Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. This is my new XP bank. If I want to mend my armor and tools, or if I die, then I can select one of the furnaces, a bit hidden here below a carpet, so this is a furnace. Just take out green dye and get the XP that is stored in the furnace. The setup is similar to Amango's design that he created a few years ago for an Izuma challenge. But the unusual thing is that not all furnaces give the same amount of XP. I have three tiers. The orange ones just gives enough XP to repair tools and perhaps armor, while the green ones give a ton of XP which can be used to get almost 50 levels. And the yellow are in between. And basically you can change the amount of each furnace within some limits by just swapping out the container in the back here. So let's give this a try here in the creative world with a copy of the same furnace array. All of the lamps are on, that means all of the furnaces are ready. And we have a whole host of pickaxes that are pretty badly damaged. So they all have 2000 damage. And let's go to survival. The orange furnaces are basically for tool repairs. So they are there to repair one tool fully and the second tool maybe half. So just take out the die. So let's stop the current sprint. So you see one pickaxe is fully healed, the second is half healed, almost half. So we got a pretty decent chunk of XP out of there. Certainly enough to fully mend one netherite pickaxe and a bit extra, be it another tool, maybe a shovel which has less durability or maybe some armor. So let's try this again with a yellow furnace. Again, fresh pickaxes and just take out the die. And now you see both pickaxes are fully healed and I even got 27 levels. So there's quite a lot more XP here in the yellow furnaces. So let's reset the levels here and get rid of these pickaxes. And for the green ones, we will fully heal two pickaxes and we get another 40 levels. So this is quite good, especially if you died, you can enchant a bit of stuff. And for all of these furnaces, the lamp went off. That means the furnace is now smelting again. And the lamp will go on if the furnace is fully filled with green dye. And the magic, of course, is that we burn cactus. So we have a cactus farm that I simulate here with a command block. So I can have cactus come in. And the cactus is just first come, first serve, distributed over the furnaces. Same for the fuel. There's another command block that will put in dried cat box. In my survival world, of course, both come from a farm. And each cactus that we burn gives one XP and takes 10 seconds. And the XP, of course, is stored in the furnace and will be given to the player if the player removes the smelted stuff. So if we fully want to repair a netherite pick, then we need just over 1000 cactus, as each XP can repair two durability. And a netherite pick has 2031 durability. The cliff notes is that the amount of XP that is stored in the furnace is the amount of green dye that is stored here behind the furnace. So the output from the furnace goes into this hopper, into this double chest, into this hopper, and then into this dropper. They are all full. And that's the only way the green dye can back up into the furnace. And now we can get out our calculator and we have 10 stacks in the hoppers. We have 54 stacks in the chest. We have nine more stacks here in the dropper and we have one stack in the furnace. So that comes out to 74 stacks total or about 4,700 XP. And the flexibility here, of course, is which type of container we use. Because in this spot, we can use a double chest, which is the largest container. Or we can, for example, use a barrel, which has less green dye. Or we could use a dropper or a hopper. So a barrel has 27 stacks, a dropper has nine, a hopper has five. And we could use a decorated pot in 121, which has only one stack. So this configuration is the smallest that we can achieve this way. And it would hold just over 1300 XP. So let's summarize. Depending on the container on the back, this setup gives you between 1300 XP and 4700 XP. If we use cactus, of course, orange are with a decorated pot, yellow with a barrel and green with a double chest. So there are two reasons 
why you might want to have more capacity for your XP smelters. One reason is simply that the XP is not enough. I usually meant two tools or two tools on my armor at the same time. So the classical XP smelter with about 1000 XP is not enough. But the other reason is that you can make an XP smelter that is fully automatic. You could have a villager farm producing potatoes and potatoes are still giving a reasonable amount of XP. So one potato gives about a third of an XP point. So that's a third of the cactus, but it's much more than most other things that you can smelt. So you can do the setup with potatoes, but of course you need three times the amount of potatoes to get the same amount of XP. And if you use this, this XP smelter with potatoes, then you see that the XP is 470 for the small version or about half of what you need to mend a netherite pickaxe. Now the yellow version is pretty much what you need to mend a netherite pickaxe. And the green version has a bit of extra for a second tool and or armor. So if you want to do a potato based version that you can chunk load, that is completely automatic, that works if no player is in the vicinity, then you will need a bit more capacity. So on my survival server, I have a pretty healthy cactus farm here below my storage. But this farm will only work if I'm in random tick distance. So basically, if I'm within 128 block of this building here. So this furnace will accumulate only XP if I'm in the area. Okay, let's first look at the original Imango design, which is quite clever. The basic idea is we want to empty this dropper once we take out the green die. And how can we detect this? Well, easy. This comparator here will read this container, in this case a composter, but we could also put a dropper here or something only if this redstone dust is below 15. So if this is anything between 0 and 14, we will always get the output from the container, which is 0, because the composter is empty. But once the furnace is completely full, we get 15, and then we read 15 here. So this output here jumps from 0 to 15. If the furnace is full and the output jumps to 15, then nothing happens because we move the observer in this position. But once we take something out, the observer is pulled back over this piston and this piston will move over the observer here. We have an observer clock emptying our dropper and the trapdoors here allow us to move this back and forth using these pistons. And once this dropper is completely empty, so let's maybe help a bit here. So once this dropper is completely empty, this comparator changes and updates this piston and this moves this observer back in position. The clock is turned off and the whole system starts to fill up again. And this is my variant with a variable storage. So I put in another hopper and another container here. And again, we can replace this container with a decorated pot or with a double chest to have the two extremes. I had to move everything a bit around to account for this additional container. And the main reason is that we need a slower clock to empty this dropper. Now, a Mango system uses an observer clock, and this is basically because the dropper contains more item than the hopper and the furnace together. But this is no longer true here. And that's the reason why we use a, a clock that works at hopper speed. So this way, the comparator on the right side will only show an empty dropper if all of the containers over the dropper are empty as well. This setup here creates a clock that works at hopper speed. However, it's not entirely under safe. Let's activate this for a moment. The problem is if you unload the system, then it can happen that this repeater gets stuck and we no longer have a clock, but a constant signal. And in 121, a good way around this is to use a pulse divider like this. So we use a copper bulb. With each signal, it goes on and off. So this is essentially the smallest pulse divider that we can do. And this works at double hopper speed, so now this clock works at topper speed. And this is the system that I actually use in the final version. Now, if you build this in 120 or lower, then you could build a version that I just showed and replace it once you upgrade to 121. And so the system works in pretty much the same way. This comparator updates a piston. Now, if the piston is pushed down, then nothing happens because the pulse will go into this observer. But if we draw up the piston, then we will activate this trapdoor. The trapdoor activates this piston here. This pushes over the whole shebang 
and activates the observer clock and weakly power this dropper here. So let's do this. We take out the green die. There we go. And now we'll output the items with hopper speed into a cobweb, which kills the momentum and groups them to stacks. So they will just fall into the fire below. And once everything is empty, this comparator will react and push the observer back to the other side. Now, Impulse from Hermitcraft recently did an XP smelter that uses minecarts. And of course you can yeet all of the green dye in one minecart in one operation, be it a chest minecart or a hopper minecart, which is really nice. However, minecarts are entities and cause a lot more lag than a container. And I don't think it hurts if we take a few minutes to empty this container here. Let's face it, even for the smallest XP bank, we have to smelt over 1000 cactus. This means we'll need over three hours until this bank is refilled. So who really cares if this empties the green dye for a few minutes? And also I'm not sure if we can use the minecarts easily in a one way tileable way. So I will just stick to the solution. I think it's very solid. It's all one way tileable. It's almost flush because the carpets hide the ugly redstone here. And now finally, let's have a look at the supply of cactus and kelp and we are back in my survival world. So on one side, I have this big cactus farm here, which uses a water stream to move the items here over an item filter. So this is the item filter for the cactus and this just goes in this hopper line here. And next to it, we have an item filter for the dried kelp blocks. And they come in from the other side. They come in from this water stream because at the moment, this is the only contraption that my kelp farm supplies. So what I do is I read this container here and if this container falls below a certain redstone level, in this case we will use level 9, then I enable a good old redstone line going all the way to my kelp farm. And basically if this dropper is more than half full, I will disable the kelp farm over there. And now I don't want to use calibrated skulk sensors and wireless redstone. I tried it. I just get too much interference from other components in my industrial district. I would basically have to insulate everything with wool, which would kind of defy the purpose of wireless redstone, which is very sad, but a redstone line will do the trick. Now this cactus farm, even though it's pretty large, only manages to fill between three and four furnaces here. So if I take out the dye from a lot of furnaces, I will have to wait for a while until they are full, but that's okay. And of course my cactus farm is smack dead in center of my industrial district. So regardless of where I am, this cactus farm is always random ticked. So it will work all the time because the cactus farm is the bottleneck in the setup. Now the dried kelp farm, is in the corner of the district, but that's not really a problem because we have this massive cache of blocks behind each furnace. So we have two hoppers behind each furnace containing 10 stacks of dried cap blocks and we have another stack in here. And this is roughly enough to smelt 14,000 cactus. Even for the largest system, we could uh, replenish the XP three times. And of course my cap farm is a lot more powerful so I will have to run this kelp farm for just five minutes and I can run all 10 furnaces for an hour. And again, usually only very few of these furnaces will be smelting. So it's quite okay if this dried kelp farm is not loaded at all or partially loaded as long as it is loaded now and then and be able to produce a bit of dried kelp blocks. Now that's my new XP smelter. So this will give me plenty of XP. And I'm around in this industrial district quite a lot. So I'm not worried that these furnaces will take a long time to fill up. And I don't envision using more than one at a time. And if I want to, I can always extend this array and add a few more furnaces. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.